Welcome back here to the Ride Along channel on a lovely sunny day in Vasiliki over on the western side of Greece. Where if you're coming, do remember, drop me a message or two for some cheeky coaching, bit of clinics and all the rest. But the reason I'm starting this little video just now is to be honest, I'm a little bit underpowered. It's not as windy as I was hoping. I thought it was going to fill in and it hasn't quite just yet. And it really got me thinking, how many different ways are there to read the wind? Unless you can really read the wind, understand the direction it's coming from, and the gusts and the lulls that are coming through, how do you know if you're actually going back up wind? The reason I'm saying that is because to try and make the most of every little gust I had just then, I've come quite a long way downwind in our sailing area just here. And now I'm slowly tracking my way back up, reading the wind and working out how close to the wind I can sail. So there are a number of different indicators you can use to tell where the wind is coming from. And from beginner to advanced, here comes a gust. Can I use it without going downwind far? From beginner to advanced, I try to encourage everyone to use a whole range of these wind indicators, not just rely on one. The first one I'm using a lot is I'm looking upwind. It's the most obvious one, and those of you guys that have been with the channel a lot will know I talk a lot about vision. So I'm looking over my leading shoulder, trying to see darker patches in the water, trying to read the ripples and how they change. Now what I'm not saying is reading the waves, because the thing is, on a completely flat lake with no tide, no moving water at all, let me go up to speed a bit, then yes, the waves will go with the wind. But when the wind changes direction slightly, the waves aren't going to change direction instantly. It's going to take time. And you might find that the veer, you might find that the wind shifts backing and veering one way or the other ever so slightly. And that five to 10 degrees change of direction in the wind results in hundreds of meters difference way up ahead of me when I'm trying to sail back up wind to get back to where I started from or a safe spot. That's really why it's so important to use a multiple of methods and multiple of indicators. Yes, I know this is the Ride Along channel. I try and do everything on a board as much as I can, but I think right now a little voiceover and a map of Vasiliki Bay will clarify things a little bit more. So let's use the magic of computers and make this map a little bit simpler. Let's add on to this map the wind in its normal wind direction, sort of northwest as it's coming across the bay just there. And then I think I need to be down at the bottom corner, roughly where I am on the water right now. The line I've just added is across the wind. So it's square or perpendicular to the wind. So that is my beam reach course. That's my original starting goal when I start moving. Once I've got my beam reach and I've started to sail, I can then pinch a little bit closer to the wind. That's called a close reach. And that's me moving 10 to 20 degrees upwind, not much more than that at all. And right now, with this wind direction and where I currently am, that would get me to my goal point. Let's get rid of that because something is happening. The wind is shifting, the wind has changed direction. Now obviously this is a computer animation and I know that's only 15 degrees that that wind has changed and that's called a veer. It's a clockwise wind shift, which has completely changed things now. Now my beam reach takes me down there, down towards the harbor. You can see it's still perpendicular to the wind. The close reach, that 10 to 20 degrees that we just had, will now take me about here, which knowing Vasiliki Bay and the scale of the beach, which I know isn't clear on this map, but I know it, and roughly there, is about 500 meters away from where I originally was, just from a 15 degree wind shift. The other thing that's done is put me very close to the danger zone of the harbor, that downwind gray little marker is where loads of fishing boats and ferries and yachts come in and out of, definitely not where I want to be. So my safest option, if the wind has done this in my bay just now, which I need to be aware of, is to do a shorter run, tack, another short run, or even a longer run, it doesn't matter on the second tack going away, still pinching close reach, another tack, and once I've gone that far upwind, I can then use the close reach once again to get back to my original goal point. Now something's happening once again, to start with, the wind went back to its original direction, but now it's starting to shift once again 
only 15 degrees is all I've shifted it on this animation just now, and it's called backing. That's an anti-clockwise wind shift. Now in this wind shift, it's a bit of a winner. It's like winning the windsurf lottery just now. Perpendicular to the wind again, my beam reach. As you can see straight away, I would already hit my goal point. 10 to 20 degrees, I'm well upwind of my goal point and can finish right in the corner there, which is actually a little village called Ponty. And that's what I'm gonna try and do on my way back in because the wind shift has actually helped me out in this direction. My next indicator I use just before I launch, of course, is the other windsurfers. Because there's a general rule of thumb, and I'm overgeneralizing, I know, windsurfers go back and forth across the wind. So you can kind of look at the direction most of the windsurfers are going, and it'll give you a bit of an idea of where the wind is coming from. The next indicator that's quite a good one is boats on a mooring. Now boats sitting on an anchor or a mooring of some sort in the open water this is, such as there's a yacht up ahead of me or there's a number of safety boats up and down the bay here. When they sit on that anchor or their mooring, they will naturally spin to face the wind. So you've basically got a massive wind indicator right in the middle of the sailing area. The thing to bear in mind is that boats take time to pivot and spin. So the wind might be changing direction and it takes a little bit of time for that boat to change direction of where it's sitting. Dinghies sitting on the mooring, the same as the big yachts, the same as the small safety boats, they all spin to face the wind. Now I wanna revert back to that idea of vision I had just a second ago, because yes, I'm looking for the wind, but what I'm really using when I'm turning to face the wind is my ears. Right now I'm looking forwards, across, and slightly upwind, and I can feel the wind in my left ear only. I can hear it. I can hear a bit of a whistle coming through. As I turn my head to face the wind, I can now hear the wind in both ears. And as I turn just past it, the wind has gone only to my right ear. So by standing still, turning my head one side to the other, you'll be able to hear and listen to that wind and work out exactly where it's coming from. Another big wind indicator I use a lot of the time, of course, is flags. If you're at any sort of a windsurf center or a water sport or any wind sport, make sure you've got some flags up on your beach. At least one, if not a couple. From me right now, looking back towards the beach, I can see one, two, three, four, five, six flags, I think. Now I'm quite a long way away from those flags, but they're a pretty good indicator of where the wind's coming from. And what I can tell from here, looking back at my flags, is the wind on the beach is ever so slightly cross offshore. It's blowing slightly diagonally off the beach. Whereas right now, using my ears, it's blowing cross shore. So I know when I get closer to the beach, my target from here, I actually want to finish a bit higher or get close to the beach, a bit higher than my final target, because I can see that wind is gonna change direction ever so slightly when I get closer to the land. As 
I speed up, a parrot wind starts to kick in, which does make things a little bit complicated because the wind that I can hear in my ears right now isn't the true wind. It's the wind that's coming somewhere diagonally up here. Now I'm gonna do a whole nother video on that one. So don't get confused with true wind or apparent wind. Right now, the only wind I'm really concentrating on is the true wind, where the wind is actually blowing from. The next indicator I've got is my sail. And for this, I'm gonna slow it right down flick to the camera on my back and possibly even use an up pole ever so slightly here because when I stop here my sail becomes a flag and this tells me right now that's the wind direction which if I revert back to the beach I can see I was quite right with what I'd spotted earlier from the flags that now I'm only 100 meters or so from the beach here the wind has shifted offshore slightly so I thought I was upwind but because of this bend in the wind as I got closer, I'm now a little bit further downwind than where I wanted to be. Very light winds just now. I'm using a number of sources. I'm looking upwind hard, trying to see gusts and ripples and changes of color in the water. I'm listening using my ears and I can feel the wind is blowing from that direction. So right now, I'm sailing about as close to the wind as I can. And while we're on the subject of reading the wind so that you can make your way back upwind, when I'm picking a goal point, which is super key from beginner to advance, that's my wind across the wind is my starting goal point on a beam reach. Once I know where that is, I'm trying to nibble and pinch my way upwind, but only a little bit. I'm not trying to sail what you see on some of the diagrams around the place, which is 45 degrees off the true wind, is your no-go zone. Sailing that close to the wind is very, very hard, if not impossible. And on the kit I'm on right now, this is a 100 litre or a 103 Ignite from starboard with a fairly small freestyle fin and a 5.9 Spy from 0.7 a five baton wave sail, a decent bit of power when the wind kicks in, but I'm slightly underpowered, so there's no way I'm gonna be able to sail that close to the wind. I'm about 20 degrees or so above a beam reach, which is across the wind. Now, if you're just starting your windsurfing career and any water sport, to be honest, you're learning about reading the wind, the first one I would start with are flags and my sail. Wherever you are in the sea, as I depower and the sail starts to flap a little bit, that's a great indicator of where the wind is coming from. And that works anywhere. But... to summarize, a good windsurfer and a good wind sport person will use all of the information available to them to work out exactly where the wind is coming from and then you can sail on a, an appropriate line and you can put your sail and your body in an appropriate position. Like I said at the start, if you're coming out here to Vasiliki at any point, drop me a message. My contact details are in the description just down below. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit subscribe, hit like, and maybe you even use some other wind indicators that I haven't mentioned just now. What else have you got at your school or your center that you can use to work out where the wind's coming from or your local beach? And if you want more information and more chat through these kind of things, make sure you join the Patreon link, which will take you to the Walk Along series. The Walk Along series is simple, short explanations of me just walking down the beach. I don't need to be on a board with a sail to explain a few things to you. So join the Walk Along series through the Patreon link. Everything is in the description of this video. I will see you either on the waters here at Vasiliki or elsewhere on the channel. Bye.